today, I will show you exactly how to qualify to the Solo Zero Build Victory Cash Cup Finals. I'll be going very in-depth on my thought process and decision-making as I played, prepared, and qualified for the finals in the first one of this season in Chapter 5, Season 4. First off, things are very different in the meta this season. Notably, there is no more Nitro and there is no more Bedmist to be found. Now, Nitro may seem obvious, but in my opinion, I think it was a huge bailout item for many people last season. It covered up a lot of slow rotation habits. Habits, you know, it knocked people backwards, and it really helped you kind of hold your ground inside a bunker or bubble. Additionally, all nitro rings and canisters are also removed. If you played a lot of zero build like me, you probably had these spawn locations memorized in your head, and I'm sure it was great for builds players too. With Medmist being removed, this also lowers the ability to tank Storm. This is still possible to do this season, but with the nitro speed up and Medmist found in the large ammo crates, it was super easy to play for vaults and Storm, wait around in large POIs, and just run in for end game. It was was definitely a viable strategy, especially as people tried to avoid cheaters last season. Now this season, it's a lot harder to do and you will be held edge zone more if you try and play zone. People aren't rotating as fast. They haven't quite realized that they need to get ahead early and rotate center. The only way to really rotate now is with shockwaves and flowberry, which for the record, I'm in favor of this meta. Now to remedy all this meta shift as a solo and in duos, we have to keep in mind we have to rotate a lot earlier. This means we need to quickly and efficiently loot our drop spot. Then, as soon as we see where zone is pulling, move ahead early to that area. Ideally, you're moving and rotating ahead far ahead of everyone else so that you can get into a good position and get those placement points early and not get caught up in a congested rotation when everyone else is rotating after done looting. Rotating ahead early like this is a skill that takes practice in my opinion and something that can really set you ahead from everyone else. Now in terms of loadout, I like the Striker Burst, Bunkers, Gatekeeper, Shockwaves, and Flowberry. There are variations to this that I covered in my most recent Zero Build meta video, but this is really what I try and aim for every game. Now a huge part of solo Zero Build opens is finding a drop spot. I see so many people just speedrunning their games and not qualifying simply because they're dying off spot. This tournament is huge in terms of placement points. So you want to find a drop that you are confident in, preferably aiming for a chest spawn with 100% chance of a spawn rate. Use a tool like Osirian.gg or Fortnite.gg and they have different ways that you can see, hey, does this chest spawn every game? Once you have a bit of a loot route worked out in your head, you want to practice. Do not just show up the day of the tournament and expect to win your off spawn fight. You need to practice the loot route, see how fast you can do it, where to rotate after you're done, and figure out where you may get pressured from. Having a plan in place is good, but you need to have a real life scenario to compare it against. Another trend I have noticed is just seeing people fight off spawn unnecessarily. I've literally qualified with no guns, no damage items, no rotation items numerous times throughout Solo Zero Build Tournament. If you just avoid fights and make it to end games, you'll be good. Do not be too proud and never swerve away. If you're out dropped, that's okay. It's better to make it further in the game than die off spawn with a zero point game. Remember, you only have seven games to qualify and realistically you need to make two to three end games to make it to qualification point. And speaking of qualification points, I want to highlight the changes from last season to this season. Last season, there were a lot more qualification spots on every single region than there are this season, which does worry me for the future of zero build. But basically, that means every region then is going to be higher in terms of the total qualification points you need to get into a qualification spot for finals. In the major regions of NA and EU, you will need 110 plus points for every week to qualify to the final. Keep this in mind as you debate whether to fight that person or not. Now we're going to dive into my games and I really want to break down my thought process and critique what I did right and wrong each game. That way you can see real examples of what I'm talking about here. Let's get into it. I honestly was not sure where to drop for this season. I had a look at some of the drop spot data from the EU Cup earlier in the day, and I decided I was just going to drop where my duo SSJ and I had landed all of last season. And as you can see, I'm actually out dropped here, so I just had to swerve to the bridge where I know no one else is. It is key to be aware as possible in solos just throughout the entire game so you can make plays like this. I knew no one was at the bridge so I could swerve there safely. As I'm looting, now I just have to know where this guy is above me and then I get my loot and rotate to this hill and launch pad out. 
I want to get center again and get a good position. I waste no time in my rotation to get one of the spots I know where I can hold until later in the game. And sure enough, I pull a few zones and eventually I can tell it's going to end up towards Dr. Doom. I just want to keep holding angles in the end game and make it as late as possible with my utility still intact. Now, I got pretty lucky here, I did not die out of the air. Bubbles are actually broken at the moment and do not place in the water. And the guy that keyed me just absolutely choked. And even though I have someone close to me outside of this bunker, I just have to hit Flowbear and heal up and hope that he doesn't push me. Now, one tip I would say is to use the Flowbear to bounce off of the tires of a bunker like I did here to rotate further. That little extra distance could make up a huge difference in the long run. Now, I think I did a good job of being patient and applying pressure, and one thing I would do differently is for the last guy, I would swap to my AR instead of trying to shotgun him from too far of a distance. Now, because I played for Endgame, I'm already sitting at 58 points. This is huge to get an early start on the points needed to qualify. Now, I wanted to land this little edge drop outside of Underworld, but again, I was contested, and I had to make do with some scraps loot that I normally would not want to use as my main loot source. But because we're being patient, I was thankfully rewarded. I have more than enough loot now to make it to end game. Once more, I rotate ahead of zones to get a good camping spot early to continue to get the points I need to qualify. And I was actually really set up well here to make it deep into the end game. I just got greedy with my fighting and got caught up in this third party. I should have just played back in the bush or on the hill and beamed from a distance rather than leaving it to a coin flip shotgun play here that just cost me the game. Into game three, I'm actually uncontested off spawn and I can finally hit my full loot run. And early game, I run into another player and make some quick work of it. Then it's the same thing once more, rotating ahead of zone to get to a safe spot early. I want to stay away from the congested side of zone, meaning where most of the people are likely to be rotating in from. This game, since I have so many shockwaves and bunkers, I'm able to rotate in safely into each zone.
play here is pretty obvious. I griefed myself with my own shockwave by throwing it too late. The idea was to throw him away so I could land on a spot I just decided to throw my shockwave too late. Still, a pretty good game by getting third place. And now I've qualified at 116 points and the rest of the games are not needed. I know I've met the point threshold that the tournament will end on for me to qualify. With 44 minutes left in opens, I think qualifying in only three games is pretty darn good for the first week. Now I wanted to show you how this playstyle translated to finals for me. Here's one of my games and I will let most of this game just play out for you. With the loot I had, I really didn't have much of a chance winning that game. If I had perhaps played more aggressive and gotten a refresh Dang. earlier, I would have had more shockwaves or bunkers to use there in the final fights. If this video helped you learn something new, please leave a like and subscribe if you have not already, and we will see you in the next one.